Welcome back, casters, to the channel. I'm Mark, and today I'm going to help you all become better gamers. Now, today, guys, we've got a brand new Light Frost deck profile that I wanted to show to you guys. Uh, this is a lot better than the deck I posted, like, earlier this week. Uh, in case you guys saw this one, um, it was a little bit whack, a little bit not great. But I updated the deck. We made a competitive list, and um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. We're going to go and hit go ahead and hit the card by card and then i'll talk to you guys about how the deck actually works um shout out to everybody who's been playing with me on tabletop sim i appreciate y'all actually showing me the light of how this deck works and functions and how to properly play it um but yeah we got six light or two prismora three frost or one father sam barbecue revolutionary four ice worm one fourth of july promo two bookmarks one new beginnings three embedding the soul two icy path one righteous reckoning one divine covenant Three Sam's Scarf, three Sam's Backpack, three Sam's Cryptid Cam, two Crystallized Light, two Laser Beam Gun Upgrade, and one Infinite Power. Uh, these are just extra cards that you could potentially be running. You could play Growth. With Growth, you could also play Opalescent Moss. Uh, this is a Forest Light Artifact. So uh, you can also potentially main deck Absorb Aura. And you can also, I think this card is funny, so I just put it here anyway. Magic Scarecrow. It's not great, but it's a card. So this deck entirely revolves around artifacts. I think this deck is a little bit crazy. So we're going to actually skip the beasts. We're going to talk about the artifacts first because I feel like they're what matters the most. So this whole deck revolves around the Sam cards. Uh, first one we're going to talk about is Sam Scarf. This is a one drop 50 LP artifact. It has convert. Contract, you may only contract this page if you're wearing a scarf arena. Any page with Sam or Sam's in its name can be contracted for one less. So, this is for any card that has Sam or Sam's in it. It does also count for Sam's scarf itself. So, if you have a Sam scarf in the arena, you could play the second one for free. And there's obviously Sam's scarf synergizes with itself. Sam's backpack, you can play it for one light. Cryptid Cam, you could play for one light. And Father Sam, you know, you could reduce the flame cost. So that's pretty good. Uh, the effect does stack. So keep that in mind, guys, when you're playing. Uh, you're not going to use the power. Uh, Sam's Backpack, pretty great card. Comes out with Fleet. Costs two light, 65 LP arena. If any page with Sam's in its name is touching this artifact and it's targeted for an attack, this artifact becomes the target of the attack instead. So... Typically, you'd bring out Sam's backpack. You'd want to try and protect either the Cryptid Cam or the Sam's Scarf. Power. Search your spellbook for an artifact or spell with Sam's in its name and place it into your chapter. So, you know, obviously in this deck, you could search out Sam's Scarf. You could search out another backpack. You could search out a Cryptid Cam. And I know there's some other artifacts that have Sam in its name, but these are the main three ones you would want to use. And then, of course, Sam's. Cryptid Cam, this card is a menace. He is annoying to deal with. He is a 3 per in the spellbook, 2 light aura, 60 LP, fleet and flash power. If camera film is in with an eyesight, so you'd have camera film on your fourth wall list, uh, target a BC with an aura cost of 2 or less. If the targeted BC has spirit, it loses spirit trait until the end of next turn. Place a photograph token in the arena that is a copy of the targeted BC with the text. This BC loses and cannot gain traits. Destroy this BC at the end of your next turn. So, uh, one of the things you could copy with this is, you know, let's say your opponent's playing uh, Fearsome Critters. You could copy Gumbaru. You could copy Rope Rites. If your opponent's playing Cosmic, you could copy, uh, what is that, Fresno Nightcrawlers. And then that Nightcrawlers loses Spirit. So, you can attack it next turn if you want to. Um... You could also copy Ice Worms. So you could try and get Ice Worm up to four to get Tribal Boost. Um, you could do that. It's another synergy that you have. Um, but this card is overall really versatile. I like it a lot. Uh, Crystallized Light, another card with Flash. Contract, opposing caster cannot attack artifacts you control until the end of your next turn. And Arena, all light artifacts you contract cost one less light or to contract to a minimum of zero. Crystallized Light does not stack. But Sam's back, or excuse me, Sam's Scarf does stack. So you could get some pretty some pretty wacky combos. You just 
spill your hand out onto the field. It's it's kind of weird. Um, laser beam gun upgrade. You might take this out for something else, but I think it's funny. Um, I personally run this so that you have something else to do with the frost worms, because you run into a lot of situations where you maybe don't have four frost worms out. They don't have tribal boost, and um, you want something else to do with them. You can do laser beam gun upgrade. Uh, infinite power. This card destroys a special ore page on contract. So you can really mess up a lot of decks with this. I think this card is pretty funny. Uh, now in the metagame, there's Neutrality, Prism, and Possessed. So this is this is a pretty nice main deck. I like it a lot. It's also an artifact. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the Beasties now, I guess, and then we'll talk about the spells. So for the Beasties, guys, uh, we do have Father Sam. Typically... You would play this off of having a bunch of scarves out. So again, scarves reduces the page cost of a card with Sam or Sam's in its name. You could make Father Sam cost two neutral, which is pretty crazy. Uh, you do play the prisms, so you could potentially, you know, cheat him out a little bit. But I think he's kind of funny. You don't have to play him. Um, we're not playing Cryptonation promo in here. We're not playing Growth in here. So maybe take him out for something better. Uh, Ice Worm. The only real BC you really need to play in the deck. Uh, contract. Research this bubble for a BC Worm with three or less aura cost and place it into your chapter. So you're going to search another Ice Worm. And you're going to go off from there. Uh, if you have four more out in the arena, you get Tribal Boost, Beastie Worm. That's pretty good. Also, one other thing to keep in mind, guys, is that Ice Worm does have a 20 base attack with three freeze. So kind of good. Kind of good. For the spells, guys, we got bookmarks for the July just to try and protect your artifacts if you need to. New beginnings. Embedding the soul. Um, I am... Um, I don't know. This card is really wacky. You can win a lot of games with it. This card basically turns every artifact that you control into an artifact beastie. That artifact beastie does damage based on their... Uh, based on how much HP they have. So if you want to read the full card, you can. This card has a lot of text. I've done enough reading today, but it's a really great card. Um, also artifact equipment, unequip. So the laser beam gun upgrade would unequip and it would become a you know beastie. So overall, I think this card is really good. I think people are going to start main decking dampens more, side decking dampens more because of it. And I think it's kind of wacky, but next card, guys, we got Icy Path. Just trying to protect some of your cards. Uh, again, you could probably cut this. I don't, I don't know. I saw someone playing Icy Path. I think that's, I think it's kind of a cute card. I think it's kind of cool, uh, especially with the fact that you can remove traits off of beasties with Cryptid Cam. I think that's kind of cool. Um, but I do like Icy Path. I think it's kind of, kind of cute. Uh, Righteous Reckoning. This card just destroys all fatigued beasties. Uh, your opponent might not be ready for this. They might not be expecting Righteous Reckoning. I think it's kind of good to play, just because it's a board wipe. I mean, for 5 Aura, if your opponent's getting greedy and dropping all their beasties, they're attacking with them all, Righteous Reckoning. What are they going to do, right? And this deck actually does play a decent amount of Light Aura. You play 6 and the 2, so you have 8 Light Aura that you could use. And that's really good, so I, I would just play it. Uh, Divine Covenant, this is the, I would say, probably one of the best cards in time. Also, it just basically resets the game, really. Uh, this card, add each caster's LP together and divide the total by the number of casters in the game. So you'd add your life points and your opponent's life points, add them together, divide it by two, and you're both at equal footing now in terms of life. Each caster has their LP set to this result and bookmarks three pages. So both casters draw three. It's pretty good. I like it a lot. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to go ahead and... Try and get some practice in, do some editing. I actually just recorded a, um, I just finished recording a video uh, from one of the big tournaments that happened recently. Uh, my, my boy John uh, from Smokey, the, from the Smokey Squad, from the Smoke Squad, um, he ended up recording a few games and I'm going to try and commentate over them all. And uh, yeah, if you guys can tell, I'm a little bit tired. I'm, I'm forgetting stuff. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get some sleep.